ladies and gentlemen, Samson. Because I'm old, okay, I am. I know y'all can't tell because black don't crack, but I'm old, okay? Y'all can't tell, but I'm 65, I am. I'm old with the Shea butter and Jesus. Um, I just go out of one name, Samson, though. Just the one name artistically. Uh, kind of like Cher and Prince and Madonna and Lassie, <laughs> you know. Uh, I am a stand-up comedian, a writer, an activist, and I just so happen to be one of the first black gay comics in the country. And over the years, that has been cool, um, but it's come with its share of challenges. You know, I don't consider myself a gay comic, never have, because when I get up on stage, my uh, goal is to be funny. I don't get up on stage to be gay. I get up on stage to be funny. And, you know, I never even wanted to come out, but it was during the first couple of years of kind of coming out, going back in, kind of coming out, going back in, uh, listening one night to a straight comic get up on stage and make all these disgusting jokes about how his gay neighbors were giving him AIDS through the wall. Uh, I sat in the back of this bar and that crushed me, you know, and I felt like if people got to get up there and give their opinions about that, why not get up and start giving my honest opinions about things? And I feel like the honesty made me more effective. But like I said, it did come with its own share of challenges. You face so much homophobia, lack of opportunities, and so many other things that I really think that uh, people would be surprised if they knew. So I'm going to share some of those things with you in this film. Josephine Baker once told Sylvester, the illusion you create on stage is everything because people pay for fantasy. I apply that rule to my own stages. No matter what happened before I got there, how I feel, or the constant fears and setbacks I face getting to my shows night after night, I create that fantasy for them. One that allows me to remember why, despite the challenges, I love and do what I do. On Tuesday night, he goddamn killed it. Most people would die. <laughs> oh no! He killed it. Everyone in the room is dying because of this man right here. Nobody can rock the punchline like this man here. Oh. You have time, you have time, you can't see this man. Oh, thank you, boo. The escape belongs to me too. After the laughter and the applause, the reality that I face in order to be the artist that people see on stage is far from a fantasy. The each message, due for automatic deletion. Uh -huh. Alright man, we got your material man. We'll get man, we talk about pussy up in this club man. I don't know about all that bad shit man. Uh, you don't want to cause no fucking ride up in here. And we don't want nobody up here whooping your ass. So uh, think about that man, think about that. Uh, we like a lot of your stuff. Um, I don't know if it would play well to our demographic. It's not easy, but my art encourages people to laugh at life, to find humor and pain, and I have to admit, I've had to challenge myself to get even better at doing that. <laughs> Especially Navigating the obstacles that I faced over the years, being a comedian who happens to be black and gay. So really, Samson, the need for more gay comics. There is no need for more gay comics. The need is more people who are gay need to come out the closet. There's a whole bunch of gay comics out here. They just don't come the hell out. They need to peel back them layers of blockage and recognize and come to terms with who the fuck they are. I've been doing comedy a long time. They need to tell the truth. The society needs to embrace and accept people for who the fuck they are. It ain't no need for no more gay comics. There's a whole bunch of them little gay 
motherfuckers out there. They need to come the hell out the closet. That's all. That is it. <laughs> no, and it is hard, okay? Because a lot of people think, you know, you choose to be gay, you don't choose to be gay, okay? You, because I'm black and gay, you don't make that shit up, okay? <laughs> okay? That's like two stereotypes I got to live up to, okay? Like, I got to roll a good blunt without breaking a nail, okay? <laughs> really fucked up and they don't tell you this before you come out is that as a black gay artist you come across opposition from both sides you have the Hollywood side which is basically white men telling you you can either play a thug or you can play a screaming queen who is a hairdresser or a stylist who has purses clutch purses flying out of his mouth every time he speaks or you can be the hyper masculine black man who, uh, you know, got guns and six-pack washboard abs. There's nothing in between. You can't be a sensitive, emotional black man. You can either be a screaming queen or 50 Cent. Then you deal with black filmmakers, and you, black filmmakers don't know what to do with us at all. I have been in a number of rooms with black men, male filmmakers, who just, if there's an, an inkling, any inkling of homo coming out of my mouth they are shut they shut down it's it's terrifying i know when i started you know being a gay entertainer wasn't a thing and you know there weren't that many gay male comics at all still aren't but especially back then it really wasn't a thing and i know i would go to some clubs and you know when i would come out you know they would throw bottles at me in the parking lot or you know there have been some occasions where the audience you know, was so hostile that I feared my safety. So it's just like you're up there and you have 50 or 60 people really, you know, angry at you. And you look and, you know, you have to find a way to get out of that club. Like, it's, you got to find a way to get out of that club. And the only way, and I learned how to do this, was to, you know, connect with them. Find those things that make us realize that we're all alike and not so different. And then had them looking at each other like, what the fuck, am I gay? <laughs> because you relate so well to them, you know? And that saved my ass a many a nights, okay? Um, and that's something that I, I can still do that 90% of the time. I mean, every now and then you do run into a crowd that just looks at you like, no bitch, you know? But that doesn't always even have anything to do with being gay sometimes you just run into a crowd that, that's not your crowd and that's okay that's one of the beautiful things about performing um as long as you get a check after that <laughs> but you know the hard part is no matter how great you are with audiences or great at your at your craft you are um the opportunities that you need to advance a little bit further so that you can you know play the mainstream comedy clubs every weekend and play these other places you know uh where you don't have to struggle or where you can get more visibility at those doors are closed to you that's a battle that a lot of minority artists and i know especially comics have had to fight all of our careers and it really hurts you know um 2014 was the hardest for me because all these years i have been fighting it fighting it fighting it and you know you have to deal with just the general stresses of life period and all those different things and it's like you know it's just everything and then i fell into this really deep dark depression one day i went to san francisco and i'm in golden gate park and i'm walking i get to golden gate bridge and i'm standing at the bridge looking over and i was gonna jump because I was that fucked up during that period of time. But to find that light, look for that light, you have to use it for inspiration and get help if you need it, but you know, um, and fight. And that's what I've had to do. And um, you just gotta keep going. Even though it hurts, you gotta keep going. Comedy goes hand in hand with hip hop. And like hip hop, the elements of sexism and most certainly homophobia are highly real? prevalent. You a good ass lesbian, you found a bitch look just like a nigga. That shit crazy. Oh, fuck about no lesbian. Man. What? Ain't nobody mad. You think y'all do y'all think y'all did something by taking two awful pussies off the market? 
Y'all ain't the type of bitches nobody in here won't. If you're gay or a woman, you can bet your identity makes jokes and put downs about you, low hanging fruit for easy laughs and shock value. And this tends to be the norm. We got a number of black filmmakers who could be using a lot of the actors from the show I was on. Like Jensen could be in any number of Tyler Perry films. He's perfect. He's got he's beautiful, he's got the body, he's got the swag. I have been, well, I'm not gonna say which filmmaker it was, but we've been on a, a red carpet with a very popular black filmmaker who was gay, but not talking about it. Might be married now. Uh, and we were on the red carpet for the Image Awards. He was li literally 10 feet away from us. Never ever turned his head, would not, like we were invisible. If, we, if he would not turn his head that way because we were like, pariahs to him, he cannot be associated with us. From the beginning of my career, the reason I started doing comedy was to heal myself. I need to say that as, as, as a prerequisite for why I even started doing comedy, was to heal myself. And the fact that other people like my work and they get some healing from it is, a, is something that's positive. So I was not going to put myself in harm's way. I'm an attractive woman. And at the beginning of my career, I had to have security. I would come out of clubs in Oakland and guys would be sitting on my car. So cool. And I'm, I'm, I can't play so with cool. that. I would either go back in the club and get a bouncer to so come cool. and do something. But eventually so cool. I had a guy so cool. who went around with me for two years so that I could go and perform and be safe, make the money and bring it home to my children. And then once I began performing in gay and lesbian venues, that certain element of harm was diminished. And at the same time, I'm always aware of taking care of myself as a woman out here on the road um, doing comedy, whether it was black comedy, gay comedy. I'm a woman out here on the road. It's a very different kind of life for me. I know gay male comics, I know men comics, they go out on the road, they live very differently. They can drink, they can do this, they can get girls and do all that stuff. My goal was to make people laugh, get that check, get home, and take care of my kids. It was a very simple formula for me. <laughs> so I'm not out to prove anything to anyone. I was trying to make the world a safer and better place for myself to live in it as I am. Again, that authentic peace. So I do everything I can to safeguard myself. I think that I'm disappointed in the public and the audience um, not paying attention to the fact that there are no women on this, there's no women on that. And they're paying so much money to go see shows that are like five men and no women or six men and no women, um, you know, we're not trying to take over the man's spot. This is a man's world, like it or not. But there always, in every situation, should be a woman to represent for the people who are spending the most money. Because the people who are spending the most money in every market is women. Somebody needs to stand up and say something, um, you know, because if you don't, then, we're never going to be able to progress. You know, uh, there's tours going on, there's shows going on, there's concerts going on, but there's not one woman represented. And we're not trying to, you know, raise hell. We just want to be represented. We just want to have somebody to speak for us. The, the lack of diversity in um, comedy and acting and film and television for women, black, all minorities, Asian, Latina, you know, gay, butch, straight, everything is grossly, um, you know, unrepresented. Uh, I may not be saying it right, right now, but you know what the fuck I mean. You start to have these conversations and people accuse you of being politically correct. I'm not politically correct at all. 
you know, <laughs> anybody who sat on my sofa with me late at night or going out drinking with me, you know, after a couple of drinks and listen to some of the jokes that I crack and conversations that I have, know that I'm far from politically correct, <laughs> you know, and I'm a stand-up comic. You know, over the years, this has changed. You know, there was a time where, you know, people would come out and see you and they knew they were coming to a comedy show. Now I can get on stage and I can do a joke about, you know, rainbows and bunny rabbits and somebody's still going to come corner me after the show and go, oh, well, you talked about bunny rabbits and puppies and, you know, you talked about uh, golden retrievers, but you left out Rottweilers and that's dog discrimination. I'm going to go write some slam poetry about you. <laughs> And I'm like, well, bitch, get your pen and pad and be inspired. <laughs> it seems like people wouldn't know. Like, if you don't like a certain type of comedy, like, if you want squeaky clean, then go see Bill Cosby. Well, <laughs> political correctness has taken away our ability to have really honest conversations. When I say honest, yes, if you are racist, I want to know that you're a racist. So I don't have to tiptoe around your ass. Let me know so I can walk, not run away from your ass. If you're a homophobe, I need to know what's up. We need to be able to have this conversation, and I feel like we've lost the ability to do that. I am a black gay man who openly embraces and loves his sexuality in, in America. You know, that's one of the biggest politically incorrect statements that you can make, uh, or be, you know. Also, you know, I grew up in the hood, and so growing up in the hood, we played the dozens, and, you know, playing the dozens was finding flaws and, uh, you know, and, uh, and that other people had and exaggerating those things. So, you know, say I came out the, out the house and my hair wasn't brushed, and, you know, my shit looked like hamburger meat back in the day, and I didn't brush it, you know, your hair so nappy, Moses couldn't part it, <laughs> you know, or if your mama was fat, you know, your mama so fat she fell down the steps broke her ankle and some gravy poured out <laughs> or say you know you in the third grade and you went home and got help from your parents on your homework you know and you came back and they wrote on your shit you know you can see it's your parents writing okay and you still got an f on your paper bitch y'all dumb you so dumb your mama got hit by a parked car <laughs> you know we did all those things you know and then being gay you learn how to read and throw shade and you do that because you learn how to take an insult and so those are things that have suited me in comedy so i'm not politically correct at all i feel like political correctness became a thing when you know black people uh, stop being called the N-word for free and turned it into a multi-billion dollar business. When women started calling themselves bitches and when gay men started calling ourselves faggot and taking the power away from it and daring other people in power to say it, then it became a thing. Oh, well, if we can't say it, nobody can say it. That's when that became a thing. So, no, I'm not politically correct. I just feel like if other comics who aren't minorities, you know, women or gays or whatever, can be able to say what they want to say, I should be able to say what I want to say. And I do. And I have fun doing it. We had a straight people. Straight people? Yay! Yay! <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is so sad. And I don't understand, y'all. God does not approve of that lifestyle. <laughs> I don't understand it, but I'll support it, you know. Yes. Were y'all born straight? No, I'm just playing. Okay. I've been doing gay comedy since 1977. You can tell by my face. Um, I guess one of the things that was the hardest was I stayed out of the straight clubs because I didn't think they wanted me. And I mean, we all experienced that. They, they didn't want their straight clientele thinking it was a gay club, so we avoided that. But it was great. We had gay clubs. We had gay bars and Valencia Rose and Josie's. And people were coming. It caught on like wildfire. And San Francisco was a hotbed. And gay comics were coming out of the woodwork. It was an amazing time. Uh, I think the hardest thing was when I couldn't say what I wanted to say. Don't tell me not to say what I want to say. I went to Travis Air Force Base and they asked me to sign a contract. I couldn't put down the government. I, I couldn't say a dirty word. And I did the show, but and I got nothing against the military. But I still hate it when people say, no, your voice is not welcome. You 
can talk about your mom, you can talk about your shoes, you can, but don't talk about being a lesbian and, and eating pussy. Let's just put it that way. So, the deal is, young people have to be able to say what they need to say. All of them. And they have to be able to speak honestly. And to me, that's what comedy is about. Each of us. I speak in my heart. Now, if I'm going to talk about my personal life, I'm going to talk about lesbianism. Uh, if I want to pretend I'm in the closet like I had to in Pocatello, Idaho, well, I'm not going to pretend I have six kids and a husband. So I had to change all the pronouns and this and that, and I just don't do that anymore. I can't. That's not who I am, and I don't want any other comedian to compromise. If fame and fortune is, is what you want, and you want to compromise who you are, that's your business. But, no. We're all fine exactly as we are. To be more opportunities, that's what the whole thing. So I guess right, we have to do is just start writing more movies and putting more people in movies and doing our own projects. Because you saw the Oscars, right? There was like how many of us? Oh, oh none. So <laughs> no diversity. I don't even use that word no more. It's called where are all the Negroes at. That's what I do. Think where are all the Negroes at, and that should be the new program. I'm Asian. <laughs> and like my sister, she keeps moving like more family, like her house is like kind of like the underground railroad <laughs> independence, right? So it's like, it kind of is. Come on, you can get a job. <laughs> the thing, that's the glamorous part. The real work is the challenge of finding and creating spaces and opportunities for people like me, working to open some doors and to build some. And that alone can be exhausting because I'm not a lesbian. <laughs> I mean, it can really be emotionally challenging. Enduring the rejection and working through having limited resources and sometimes income and support, it's enough to question whether or not it's worth it. But I don't have a choice. First of all, Fox News, they're completely against the entire liberal agenda. And when I say liberal agenda, I mean basic shit like women having vaginas and black people being free, that type of shit, okay? <laughs> It's about creating great comedy, great art, and telling the truth. And nobody can face opposition and challenges solely in their own strength. I have God, my faith, the jokes, and most of all, people who love my work. And they're gay, straight, trans, black, white, and they're all out in that audience laughing every night. And that's the beautiful thing about laughter. It crosses all boundaries. This is what I live for. Rising up to beat the odds and doing it by being funny. And I refuse to quit. And sing. The joy, pain, the anticipation when hearts break open. So practice patience, slow it down before you speed it up. Build some momentum, blood is gonna rush. Tears will fall and hearts will dance. Remember your rhythm and take a chance. Fly high above your circumstance. See to play? Yes, you can. You supply. Your heart can believe it. You supply. Your heart can conceive it alive. Your heart can believe it. You so alive. Your heart can conceive it.